just so I can play basketball. When the love of the game means more than the score. If you just keep trying, keep trying, you're going to be as good as everybody else. When athletes overcome adversity. This field is the place that, that you can come up and just be you. Find inclusion. Chris is uh, part of the team. And bring communities closer together. These are my brothers. This football team really does mean a lot to me. Tonight, we look back on the inspiring sports stories that made us smile for this NBC10 special edition of Perfect 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us for our Perfect 10 Thanksgiving special. Over the last year, I've been traveling across Southern New England, telling the stories of inspiring young athletes and coaches. Tonight, we'll bring you those stories. Whether it's overcoming an obstacle or defying the odds, both on and off the field, these stories have truly touched our hearts and given us something to cheer for. In the next half hour, we celebrate these stories. We'll introduce you to a fan favorite at New Bedford High School. Girl Power is a collection of stories about young women who have had to defy the odds in their sport and Universal Language, a story about one football player who used his sport to learn the English language. For now, we'll get started with an incredible journey. We'll take you to Bishop Hendrick in high school. One player on their football team was born with a facial deformity that required nine surgeries in his 17 years of life. That would prove to be the least of his worries after a traumatic event nearly sidelined him for good. <laughs> Ben Tilton is used to turning heads. He got a lot of stares, a lot, of, sometimes a lot of bullying. Born with a facial deformity, it was rarely for a reason he was proud of. I was treated differently. Until he found football. The one thing we probably don't want is for him to get hit, yeah. but there was it's no way of stopping it. When Ben was 13 years old, he would receive the opportunity of a lifetime, an invitation to play on an all-star football team in Orlando, Florida. I just remember how excited that I was when I was first sent the sent the email number 34 on Chiefs. Perhaps the only thing that could have made the experience sweeter was if his biggest cheerleader, his sister Abby, were in the stands. Go Chiefs! What was their relationship like? Well, Abby was much older than Ben, so we always laughed that we had Ben for Abby. <laughs> as like a toy. <laughs> Without the use of her arms and legs, Abby used a wheelchair to get around. The siblings connected by disabilities they would never let define them. I learned that even if somebody is different, it doesn't have to make them unhappy. <laughs> Playing football in Florida, all eyes were on Ben. And that was the start of my journey, I feel like. For once, he was okay with it. I always wanted to be that football player, like the best of the best. I wanted to get to that next level. That night, December 7th, 2018, Abby died in her sleep. We often think yeah. she went because we none of us were there and she couldn't have gone if we were all there with her. We had to go get Ben <laughs> and tell him. It was the most painful thing I've ever felt. The pain followed by intense guilt. He blamed himself because he said, I, I would have saved her had I been home. The trauma would trigger constant seizures for Ben, making it difficult to live a normal life. I think um, my body knew I wasn't ready to be back here. With no cure. The father of me was like, I gotta fix it. And I didn't know how to fix it. Ben would have to pull himself from his darkest place. Something just kind of clicked for me, stress-wise. <laughs> Now, Ben is a junior on the Bishop Hendrickon varsity football team, nearly one year seizure free. It just feels amazing to be kind of like out here practicing again. When things get tough with the rest of the team, I think a lot of them put things in perspective and they look at Ben and how hard he works every day. Well, Abby will no longer be in the stands. If Abby were here right now, seeing everything that he has overcome, screaming like <laughs> loud. Ben brings a piece of her with him on the field every Friday night. I want her always with me. She was my biggest cheerleader and I want to make her proud. A pink bandana tucked into his waistband. I want to keep doing this and keep playing as long as I can so that she can still be proud of me and still be watching me up there. Today, Ben's biggest win is no longer measured in yards, but how he was able to get back in the game and who he brings with him along the way. There's something special about stepping foot on a high school football field. Whether it's the glow of the lights on a Friday night, friends and families cheering loud in the crowds, it's a sport that truly brings people together. And we've seen its impact in ways you couldn't imagine. Like in Seekonk, where it's a family affair with two homegrown cousins at the helm, the football program is seeing record numbers. Seekonk means everything to me. Um, 
I, I'm, I'm a diehard. I bleed blue. At Cranston East, Alexis Franco is using football to help prepare for the U.S. Army. Even though I might break down, I just know that it will break me down and build me right back up to a better me and also make me tougher. Or at Lincoln, where playing football might have saved Mitchell Murtha's life through the discovery of a rare blood disorder. The student section would host a purple out as football kicked off across Rhode Island to raise awareness. <laughs> Anna Ramallo spends her Friday nights honoring her late stepfather at Bishop Stang, but would trade her helmet for a tiara when her senior class gave her a night to remember. It was like my Disney princess moment. Perhaps the hardest worker on the New Bedford High School football team hasn't had to take one snap in order to become a fan favorite. I tagged along with Chris Medeiros, the longtime water boy who has become a sideline staple. Being a water boy can be a thankless job. I'm for the waters, gets kids water, and that's it. But that's never been the case for Chris Medeiros. And at this time, we would like to give a shout out to New Bedford's number one fan and the best water guy in the South Coast. Give it up for Chris. Chris is a 37 year old man with autism who graduated from New Bedford in 2005. When did you start being the water boy for the football team? Fable. <laughs> Fable will be waterable. Have fun. Get kids water. Stay focused. In his 17th season serving New Bedford sidelines, he has never let his intellectual disabilities define him. Here's the crazy thing about Chris. He remembers everyone's name. He'll see somebody from 10 years ago and run up to them and say their name, tell him he misses them. After greeting you by name, Chris will likely have one question for you. Who knew Wallace? A fan favorite across southeastern Massachusetts without ever getting in a game. He's the face of New Bedford athletics, really. The first whaler on the field on any given Friday, Chris knows that his role is wider than water. Chris is uh, part of the team, part of the coaching staff. The embodiment of school spirit. He has so much pride in what the school brings and what it did for him. Chris's joy, even surrounding one of game day's most menial tasks, is contagious. He's always like bringing us joy. This man's always trying to excite everybody up. He just brings up our energy every single time. No matter what kind of day I have, I always make sure I go find Chris after school. Whether it's during the winter, the spring, or the fall, I always go. He runs up to me, you know, gives me a hug, and, and it's probably the best part of my day. And there's no doubt that this is the best part of Chris's. Stories of inspiring athletes are still on the way tonight. Coming up, two boys on Cumberland's varsity swim team are making waves. How the school decided to take a chance on them and let them compete. Plus, girl power. How female athletes across our region are proving time and time again they're here to play. An epic shot on the court in Dartmouth gets national attention. That was high school junior Austin Santos behind that amazing buzzer beater. The shot from half court left everyone in the gym stunned. Even Austin himself, who, if you didn't know, has autism. But he clearly doesn't let that keep him on the sidelines. Crazy. Uh, I didn't think I was making the shot. Athletes like Austin can do absolutely anything they set their mind to, but they have to be given the opportunity to succeed. That was the case for two athletes on Cumberland's varsity swim team. They were given the chance and the outcome is truly inspiring. All Colby Ogilvy and Zachary Schlesinger needed was an opportunity. Swim team, yeah, it's my favorite, yeah. I'm a good swimmer and I went to swim. With no high school swim team offered for student athletes with intellectual disabilities in Rhode Island, Cumberland decided to take a chance. In thinking about uh, the boys and thinking about the limited opportunity, um, we thought collectively, why not? It's great, actually. Yeah, it's just so interesting. Yeah, yeah, my hands to my heart. Yeah, baby. Boom, 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 boom. I like to be on like. A team serving as inspiration to their teammates. Being someone who's done swim for a while, there can be times where you almost like plateau a little bit. But seeing someone like Zach or Colby, that might be disadvantaged, drop time, um, find a joy of swimming. It inspires me more. As Colby and Zach's love for the sport grows, swimming is my style. It, it a hit. As well as their muscles, you ready to go? They are continuing to make a splash, breaking barriers in high school swimming. 
We still have plenty of heartwarming stories to bring you tonight, including a softball player in Norton, how the sport helped give her the confidence she needed to overcome a difficult diagnosis, plus a grandmother's wish turning the American dream into a field of dreams when her grandson moved to the U.S., how football became the universal language he needed to get him through a hard time. Welcome back to our Perfect 10 Thanksgiving special. We're taking a look back at some sports stories that have inspired us and showed us that we can do anything we set our minds to if given the chance. That was the case for Corey Tickle, a girl from Somerset. At just eight years old, she received a prosthetic leg from a Boston Marathon Foundation, and she's made the most of the opportunity. At a young age, Corey Tickle's parents could never slow her down. I was running around like a lightning bolt. They always knew she was going to be an athlete. Even at two years old, she was running around and always had a ball in her hand. One spring day, Corey's mother, Gail, received a phone call from her then two-year-old's daycare. I don't really know what happened. I just know that we were called because there was an accident. I had to be calm at first. Corey's life would never be the same. I was uh, ran over by a lawnmower. After multiple surgeries, she would lose her left leg below the knee. There was no doubt we were ever going to treat her any differently than if she had two, two, two legs or this hadn't happened. I was so upset about it and my mom sat me down and she was like, you're not going to feel like this. You're not. I'm not going to let you. And that, that was the turning point. She was later gifted a prosthetic from Boston Marathon survivor Heather Abbott's foundation. Now a multi-sport freshman at Somerset Berkeley High School. I play volleyball, um, tennis, and I do a little bit of archery. Corey refuses to be defined by her disability. I've learned that if you just keep trying, keep trying, it, you're going to be as good as everybody else. She doesn't want any accommodations for it, and she doesn't need it. I mean, she's just the player. And that's how she wants to be looked at. And it does work. It works for her. 12 years later. The confidence increased this year, literally. I don't know what happened. I'm only going to get better from here. On one leg. Corey is the athlete we always want. She still can't be slowed down. When I get girls, especially freshmen girls, you have to try and speed them up. They're gentle. They don't hit the ball. Corey's just the opposite. You never have to speed Corey up. She goes for everything. I'm very competitive and I don't like to slow things down and I want to keep going. Her team wouldn't have it any other way. We've been coaching a long time, so it's things like that that keep you coming back year after year after year. Uh, somebody asked me if I was going to keep going. I said, I'm definitely going to go as long as Corey's here because those are the stories that do keep you going the whole way. In the male-dominated world of sports, girls are proving they can hang with the boys. And we've got to see that firsthand with female athletes in southern New England who are breaking barriers and inspiring future generations. In North Kingstown, a remarkable comeback. After developing an unexpected muscle condition, Jordan Moreau would undergo three leg surgeries in one month before leading her team to the state title game. Mia Swenson is raising awareness for student-athlete mental health at LaSalle. I'm trying to be the person that I needed when I was younger. No boys allowed. An all-girl crew would make history in this year's Newport Bermuda race as the youngest girl group to compete in the 635-mile journey. And in East Greenwich, the real race started before the starting line for Morgan Walsh, who hopes to inspire others after overcoming an eating disorder. It kind of feels like, like you're breaking free of, like, a prison that you made for yourself. The softball field's always been a place where one girl from Norton can really be herself. When life threw her a curveball, she stepped up to the plate. Ah! The softball field is a safe space Good. for Cam Shuker. It was what I loved to do for so many years and it just made me happy for so long. She wouldn't realize how much the sport meant to her until she quit playing after middle school. Everyone kind of goes down like a little hard path. I wasn't like treating school the same. I wasn't treating like my family the same. And I like noticed it and like other people noticed it. I just needed a change. That change started with a message to Norton High School's varsity softball coach. I was pleasantly surprised to receive that email. Cam asked to join the team after two years outside the lines. I'm talking to her eighth grade coach and how much of a player she was and how much of a good person she was. Uh, that's just character for my team and that just made us better instantly. She was welcomed with open arms.
it's so great to watch her grow. She's really someone that just really flourishes anywhere she is. And yeah, we missed her a couple of years, you know, coming back um, junior year, that's tough, but she hasn't missed a beat at all. High school's hard, and I think people forget how hard high school is. For as long as Cam can remember, school has been exceptionally hard. People would be like, you know, cancer they thought it was, or like, just like rude names or anything. Like there's just, there was definitely bullies that I had to overcome a lot. It's very sad, you know, like for any girl, it's super sad to like have to shave off your entire head and like be completely bald and then like go about your day. Cam suffers from alopecia, an incurable autoimmune disorder that causes hair loss. I did not want it to get me down, and it never did. If I can overcome that, like, I can overcome anything. Like, I am confident enough to walk around, like, with no hair on my head. While Cam, who was diagnosed when she was two years old, wears a wig in order to feel her most confident. I'm, like, more comfortable with looking at myself in the mirror. Cam seconds. She knows that on the diamond, surrounded by her teammates, it's an even playing field. They all just see me as me. She has such a beautiful soul. She glows inside out. Nice job. Inspired by Cam's courage. <laughs> Honestly, toughest person I know. All her team wants is to continue creating a safe space. We had our first game and she got her first hit and it was great for all of us. We were all celebrating that. Just to see her take the field and see her smile after that first hit, uh, it was it's everything that, you know, that's why we coach. That's, that's what we want to see. This field is the place that, that you can come out and just be you. Being herself despite life's curveballs, is all Cam strives for. You are who you are, and don't let anyone change that ever, because that's like the most important thing you can be is yourself. We're not done yet. Up next is a story you don't want to miss. A young man navigating a new life in the U.S. finds football. How the team turned into a family for him when tragedy took away the only one he had. On this day of thanks, we sometimes take for granted what it's like to grow up in America and live our own American dream. That dream became a reality for one young man from the Dominican Republic who now calls the small town of Burlville his home. Fresh into his journey to the States, he would find the sport of football and a new family after losing a member of his own. When Ronald Vargas moved to America two years ago, he didn't know English. My first impression was he doesn't understand me at all. But he did understand sports. I like baseball because, you know, my country always play baseball. From the Dominican Republic to a new country he calls home. America is a good country. I like America. A grandmother's wish. She wants we have a better life than, than she has. Would give Ronald a new field of dreams. Every kid I talk to, I want him to play football. So I'd be like, hey, Ronald, you ever hear of football americano? <laughs> As Ronald learned football and English, a competitive spirit was bred on and off the gridiron. I think my grandma likes the competition. When we come here from DR, she say, oh, who go learn English first? At Burlville High School, sports are a universal language. Go, Ronald! Ronnie has an unbelievable soul. Ronald breaks the language barrier, fluent in being a good teammate. I be myself every time. I'm good with everyone. If everyone wants water, I give him water. My grandma is like that too. She give me a ride every day. On May 3rd. In the last period, history class. Ronald learned he wouldn't have his usual ride home from school any longer. I tell him I need a ride. She say, oh, Ronald, the bus, the bus is right there now. Take, take the bus and go home. At home, Ronald would learn that his grandmother was killed in a car crash. I love you, Grandma. I love you so much. Thank you. His family's inspiration behind living the American dream, gone in what seemed like a nightmare. As seasons change, on the diamond or under Friday night lights, Ronald misses his grandmother just the same. I love him so much and I miss um, everything. She's food, she cooking so good. While no one can compare to his grandmother's cooking, Ronald would find a new ride to and from 
his field of dreams. Some of our best conversations were on that car ride. We've become pretty close. You know, we, we either text or chat pretty much every day. Coach Belusi is, is one of my good friends and good coach too. Coaches turned friends. I'm ready. I'm ready. Teammates turned family. You say it all the time and it's cliche, but really when you're part of a team, it's part of a family. Even Ronald honoring his grandmother's life is now a team effort. Every day she told me, oh, keep going, the English. The reading specialist came up to me and she's like, it is unbelievable how much Ronald has improved his English since he started playing sports. No matter the score, Ronald living out his American dream is a win for Burrowville. Thank you so much for watching our Perfect 10 Thanksgiving special. I hope you've been just as inspired as we are here at NBC 10 of these stories of hope, perseverance, and hard work by local athletes in our community. It's been my honor to tell these stories and I will continue to do so. You can catch Perfect 10 every Friday at 7. For now, happy Thanksgiving from behalf of all of us here at NBC 10.